Hello everyone, my name is Emma and welcome to online video course Piano Well. This is lesson number one and as I said in the introduction, we're going to work with my training book. Uh, you can download it for free on my website artofpianotechnique.com uh, as well as my other books. The link is in description to this video. Um, if you already have this book, let's open it on page 5. And the topic of this lesson is Timber with Movement. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be quite serious because I have so, ma so many things in my mind to tell you. So I need to be focused. <laughs> um, so as you can see in your book, there is just only instruction and there is no theory, so I'm going to tell you right now what is timber with movement, why do you need this, and uh, how it actually helps you to improve your technique. First, let's separate sound timber from sound movement. Sound timber relates to musical internal timbral ear. Timbral ear is an ability to remember sounds and imagine them in your head. You can listen to particular timbers that you are about to imagine that could be vocal voice, choir, or string group of instruments. After listening, you remember that sound. And then you are ready to create, to use it, to create any melody pattern uh, in your head. So timbre is an ability to imagine different colors, different timbres on any pitch. Um, now why do you need this? Why do you need this musical mean of expression? When you, when you are able to imagine every note you are about to play, you start to develop your fingertips. Um, many teachers tell about um, making fingertips more tenacious, sensitive, mm, lively, and smart. But nobody tells how to make it. And actually, why do we need this? I used to encounter the same thing, and I was questioning myself how to make that. Because nobody could give me in an answer that could help me to develop my fingertips. I always felt that something, something is wrong with me. <laughs> Alright. Um, so... We need tenacious fingertips to control every sound we produce on the instrument and to be able to keep our hands relaxed and loose. Um, <laughs> okay, I will give you an example again from my experience. One of my teachers in my childhood used to tell me that I should bring my hands on the board and be able to do this. So what I'm doing is that I'm completely, I'm completely relaxing my hands, but still I am, I am on the board. My hands not dropping down. Right now I can do this because my fingertips are tenacious. But that time I couldn't. As soon as I uh, relax my hands, uh, oh, just a bit, please. Sorry. <laughs> so, 
So, to be able to catch up with the keyboard, I had to stay on my hands and keep this tension. Mm, this is how I used to play for a long time. So, yeah, we need this sensitive and developed fingertips to be able to relax our hands and still control our playing. Because what I'm, what I'm seeing right now is that many students uh, encounter the same issue, the same problem. Instead of relaxing their hands and playing the instrument with tenacious fingertips, they have to, they have to strain their hands just to be able to control their playing because their fingertips are sluggish and insensitive. Um, so, another reason why you need to develop timbrel ear is simply because ability to imagine sounds is basic of good piano playing, of good and master piano playing. Mm, you cannot really make good sound production, you cannot um, make expressive performance um, like make good intonation, pass away while playing, um, express all dynamic nuances, harmony colors, make good and um, make good phrasing and form control each voices in polyphonic pieces unless you until you can imagine every single note that you are about to play so now <laughs> the interesting part I will try to explain how this music coming of expression actually helps you to develop fingertips the process <laughs> Um, you start develop you start developing your fingertips when you imagine every note they are about to express. Um, when you imagine sounds, this um, energy somehow transfers to your fingertips. And that energy tells fingertips how to touch keys. And this is when fingertips become lively, smart, sensitive, and tenacious. Um, I can give you a very simple analogy with the writing process. When your hand just expresses your idea and if you let your hand just move by intuition nobody will understand what you're writing about including yourself uh, so you know what I mean right the same thing is happening here you have to have clear idea that activates your fingertips So as soon as you have clear musical idea about how you want every note to sound, your fingertips will start to express this idea and become lively and tenacious. Um, I guess this is it about sound timbre, so let's move on to sound movement. Sound movement is an ability to stretch imagined sound to the right and to the left. I'm going to show you very briefly how it works and more specific, I will be more specific about that when we start working with training book. So you're seeing a sound and you literally direct your voice to the right and to the left. <gasps>
this way. Um, so many famous pianists are talking about making good intonation, good expressive tone, and sometimes even talking about how one sound gradually pours into another one. All of this starts with ability to imagine sound and stretch it to the right and to the left. We need to develop this ability because it helps our wrist become it helps our wrist to become free, flexible and melodious. Mm. Also, we need this we need sound movement because again this is a basic of expressive tone and fluent technique. Uh, so now let me explain how sound movement actually helps your wrist. Remember I told you that you express sound timbre through fingertips. So now you express some movement through motion of your wrist. Like literally. When you imagine sound to the right, you can move your wrist to the right. To the left, to the left. And again, I don't really know how it works, but from my from my side I can say that when wrist movement is in harmony with sound movement, with melody pattern, this is what brings freedom, natural flexibility. I'm not talking about absolutely loose wrist. <laughs> it's natural flexibility that is in harmony with your uh, musical idea. That will eliminate any tension, any stiffness in your wrist. This is how it works. I used to struggle with this a lot. <laughs> now I'm fine. <laughs> also, when you imagine when how one sound gradually pours into another one, that somehow brings better sensation to your fingertips and let them pre-feel sounds even better. Uh, so to conclude, I may say that timberman movement is an ability to imagine different timbers on any pitch and stretch them to the right and to the left. You need this musical mean of expression to make your fingertips tenacious, lively and smart and your wrist free, flexible and melodious. Also this is the basic of good sound production and expressive performance. Yes, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> this is so much things to tell you. Okay, so now let's come back to my book. I hope I said it all. I mean, if you have any questions, just be free to, to ask me or leave in the comment. I will always happy to answer all your questions. Okay, we're going to book. A lovely book. I love it. <laughs> okay, so page number five, Timber with Movement. As you can see, um, it has different section, this page. It has section what to do, and below you can see a table that kind of shows what exactly we need to play. Then it has section that says how to play, 
And if you scroll down on page 6, there is a reminder that I made for you to make sure that all the steps of this assignment you are making correctly. Okay, so let's start. Um, and read it. <laughs> sing and play note with movement to the right. And number one, sing and play each note with second finger. By the way, you see this um, finger that I put, I put it this in this specific order because to make, how to say, to make it easier for you to pass this assignment and to develop fingertips. Because again, from my experience, that was easier to develop the sensation on strongest fingers, second and third. Then comes first finger. This boy is very lazy. <laughs> it, he used to be so dependent. I played it just with my wrist. Now it's so, it feels so nice and I can play it with fingertips. So yeah, if you have this problem, it will, that, if you have this problem, that will help you to, uh, to overcome it. And then the rest fingers are fourth and fifth because they are the weakest one. And the sensation of fingertips came to this fingertip, came to them uh, later, much later. All right, so we're coming to the table and it says we need to play right hand in two line octaves. So we're gonna start with C, the second finger. This is basically what we do. So now let's go to, um, I know this, I know this exercise are very simple and it's going to be like this because 99% of tension will be here, okay? <laughs> All right. So, um, well, let's go to the section that says uh, how to do. Let's read, sing a note with movement. Scrolling down to reminder, it says sing straight horizontally. So what we're going to do is to sing this C on A, and when we sing, we trying to feel how the sound flows to the right and try to sing straight horizontally that means when you direct the movement of your voice try to direct it along the keyboard sometimes students start singing this way okay i'm gonna show you help yourself with eyes, with hand, whatever, that will help you to feel it easier. So don't do like this, it's a little bit different. So now we need to sing on A because it's better for sensations in our fingertips. And we need to sing straight horizontally on the keyboard because it's better for our wrist. When we play and express this movement, our wrist will go the same way, it will stay in the same level. And because everything is connected, our imagination and our movements, then if you start singing in your mind like this, then your wrist will always go this way. And we don't want this. Okay, I'm not, I don't want to tell you too much to make you overwhelmed so soon. So just trust me here. Later I will tell you why you don't need to do this. Wait. <laughs> need to make everything in order, everything in order. Okay. So, we come back to singing part. So, you basically play this note and you sing it. and play a note with movement. You're still singing the same way. Now let's talk about uh, how you need to 
play, how you need to express your conceived idea in the right way. Let's read again. The initial position of the wrist is straight. What I mean is that when you bring your hand on the keyboard, please make sure that it's straight. It's not like this, because if it's already like this, then you simply won't have enough room to make good movement with your wrist. So, keep it straight and then move it. Then, keep your wrist a little below your hand. You know, maybe it's better to show you from this side, okay? Um, why you need to keep your wrist below your hand? It's better for passing way to the instrument. We will talk about this uh, more in details in, in lesson number three, intonation and weight, but Right now, just trust me that when I'm saying that it's better, it is better. You know, we're gonna... Okay, I will tell a little bit. We're gonna feel this free energy in our body and pass it through all our body, including our arm, and just pour out into, into the keyboard. So because we all live on Earth and we all have this gravity law, the... Um, natural curve should go a little bit like this and if you have something like that that will simply means that energy will stuck here and we have nothing here anymore <laughs> and we want to make sure that we deliver this energy just into the keyboard so yeah i don't really know it's maybe it seems like one level right now well this is my hate you can find your own heat, but please do not see like like this. And do not keep your wrist like that. Alright? Okay. Next step. Don't keep in finger phalanxes and knuckles. Uh, don't do like this. Don't do like this. <laughs> No comments, we all know that we need to curve here, we need to curve here, just to be able to control our fingers, to control every sound we play in the instrument. Keep a little room between torso and elbow. Elbow, torso, space. Again, this is better for passing weight to the instrument. Um, as soon as we do like this, the energy will stuck here again. So, please make sure that there is always a little room over here. Keep your back straight. Two reasons. Three reasons. <laughs> okay, first reason that it just looks nice. <laughs> Second reason. It helps you to keep the room between elbow and torso. I will show you if you um, curve your back like this. You see what is happening? Your elbow. Quite hard to make like this. So, if you keep it straight, your elbow naturally goes apart. So it's good. And the last and the most important thing is that. Again, I have to tell you a little bit in advance something. Um, when we pass way to the instrument, we want to make sure that the way goes this way and we actually play into the instrument. When you curve your back, somehow this free energy goes into the floor when you play like this. <laughs> But when you keep your back straight, then it helps you to pour the energy into the piano. Okay, I guess enough reason, right, for you to keep your back straight. 
but maybe for you it will be just enough to know that you look beautiful when you keep your straight back. You open your heart. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Uh, make a full vegetarian movement. Full veget, of course, you know what I mean. It means that you make good big movement. Why? Because if you make a small movement and in your head you still make a big river flow, then it's in disharmony. It will bring tension to your head. So you make big movement in your head, you make big movement with your wrist. But when you start playing it faster, all the movements, uh, when all the movements will start being small. And uh, you can barely notice them. But inside muscles still remember these big movements. So I'm trying to say that do not be afraid to make good movement when you play in slow tempo. Okay. Don't raise your wrist. Okay, we came to this point. Don't raise your wrist. When you raise your wrist, you see what happens? Natural curve disappears. So don't raise your wrist. Wait on the same level. It's better for you to pass away to the instrument. Otherwise, it will be stuck here. All right. Don't move. Don't move your elbow. Control it by another hand. I've shown you on this hand. Because it's better for your wrist. If you start replacing this movement with the elbow movement, then your wrist will never be flexible. It will be still stiff and strained. So don't do like this. Alright? Let wrist start feeling the sound and being in harmony with sound. Feel it. Next lesson, I will show where you need to move your elbow. <laughs> I'm not talking about not moving elbow at all, alright? So just move wrist on this stage. Don't move your torso. Well, when you move your torso, you simply splash out all the energy. You know, everything should be logical. If you have your idea here that you want to express, you need to know which tools you have to use to express your idea. And if you start moving your elbow, 90% of your attention, start moving your torso, I'm sorry, 90% of your attention uh, will be taken by this movement. So, unless you need to play something really huge and you really need to bring your body to the left and to the right, don't do this. <laughs> Please, be straight, be cool, and know exactly that when you want to express sound movement, you move your wrist. When later you will have to um, change position, change position, you will move your elbow. And everything should be here. Please, do not move your torso. Don't strain your arm and wrist. Maintain freedom in them. Uh, this is the most important reminder ever for me and for you. Because we're going we're doing so many things. We have imagine sound here, we we keep attention 
like what our is doing, what our elf were doing. So it's very easy to forget that all the things that we're doing is just to be able to relax our hand. Always play with relaxed hand. And maybe in the beginning that will be quite devastating for you if you don't have fingertips because if you relax, if you relax your hand everything will just um, be uncontrollable. I mean you will probably cannot play fast and cannot play loud enough or your piano will be empty. Don't worry about that. The main thing, keep relaxing your hand. Later everything will will be fine. Everything will will fall into the place. Okay. Um, so let's come back to the page number five and section how to do, we're doing sing and play note with movement. So we sing correctly, we sing the note and we play all together. Repeat as many times as you want, that could be like a meditation for you, all day long. <laughs> Very peaceful. <laughs> and the last step, play a note while imagining it in the sounding of your voice. So after you sang it so many times that this sound is just it's just all in your head, it will be very easy for you to remember your own singing. <laughs> so what you basically need to do is Remember how you sang this note with all the movements, with all the texture of your sound, of your voice. And after that, express your idea on the instrument using correct movement. And I can say that I imagine sound before I play and I'm I'm, ke I'm keeping imagining while I'm playing. So I'm always in music. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh yeah, and this is the one um, last word about, you see this uh, third column in this table, it says both hands. So basically you need to play both hands. And you have to imagine both hands. And this is the beginning of developing polyphonic ear. Polyphonic ear is an ability to imagine several voices simultaneously in your head. Just like in playing polyphonic pieces. Remember like food? Was, how many voices did we have? Three, four, five? <laughs> yeah, you can actually imagine them. All of them. Soprano, alto, tenor, bass. And even more. Two sopranos. Two tenors. <laughs> um, I'm telling you right now, if you're going to imagine them right away, together, you can never do this. Because It's very hard to imagine both hands evenly in your head. They will all be all, there there will be always like one right hand may probably sounds louder than left hand. Or if you a left hand then left left hand would, would be louder than right hand. So to make it easier for you, let's go to reminder. And it says, when you imagine notes whose movement to the right, start imagining both hands 
from lower note in succession. What I mean is that you imagine notes this way. Both of them to the right. Then reduce time between notes until both notes sound simultaneously in your head. You're imagining this way. So when time between them is zero, so from this, we're going to this. And actually, imagining something simultaneously, it's imagining two voices with zero time between them. Try to make this exercise and in a couple of days you will probably start start improving this. Eventually you will be able to imagine two notes together right away. Okay, so <laughs> this is a long long explanation <laughs> for you how to work with Assignment number one from lesson number one, Timberwood's movement. Now I'm going to show you how this exercise <laughs> uh, will appear for an outsider listener. <laughs> we all know what we're doing while we're accomplishing this assignment, but this is how it's going to look. I'm going to play on, on, on a few notes, I'm sorry, it will take a lot of time if I'm making all of this. Okay, so, second finger, sing a note. You can repeat this as many times as it takes for you to start actually um, moving from this blank in your head towards some light, some sounds that will appear in your imagination. It may take a couple of days. Well, maybe for some of you it, it may take more time, but I'm sure, I mean, I'm pretty sure your musical ear is not so bad. <laughs> okay, next note. Then, I mean, if you want, you can switch to actual left hand and do the same with left hand. This one you can sing lower. For our girls, we can sing as, as low as we can. <laughs> of course, we cannot sing that octave. Then both hands. Still second finger. You can do first this exercise. Imagine. Faster, faster, and faster. Before you start doing this. Okay, so now you sing. Now you imagine. And wait. Yeah, I feel that, you know, as soon as I imagine the sound, I already feel something here, even though I I, I have not touched the key yet. Mm, that's a nice, that's a nice feeling. Okay. Next up, C sharp. to D to D sharp E F F sharp G G sharp E A sharp B <laughs> then you 
you take a rest then you come back to second exercise it says third finger so then you start doing this maybe that would be next day you start doing this with second with third finger the same thing sorry the fifth exercise with your fifth finger. Then if you scroll down to assignment number two on the page seven, um, it's basically absolutely the same exercise, but the difference that now every movement you make to the left. And let me read for you from a reminder. When you imagine notes with movement to the left, start imagining both hands from higher note in succession. So basically you imagine, if you play to the left, you imagine, um, you imagine like this first, and faster, until together, until both sounds um, sound simultaneously in your head. That's it. I hope that wasn't really boring. It's not really boring when you do this. I like it, you know? <laughs> okay, so spend some time with this exercise. Ask me if you have any questions. And then move on to the next lesson, lesson number two. See you in the next video. Have a blessed day. Bye.